Nokia yeah. Hyundai <laughs> channel. Don't mind the Subaru here. Our laptop is plugged in right now, and we with a short, short cord. Yeah, we're short so on the distance table had right to now. Move. <laughs> So this isn't our usual setup, and if you're new here, it's usually not this chaotic. So we're at the Kia Hyundai channel. My name's Gabby. And I'm Mike. And every single day, or every single weekday at least, we film either a Kia or a Hyundai, or both. Sometimes we'll compare them. Uh, vehicle live at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On top of that, we are a real dealership. We're actually at three real dealerships. I'm going to go through a little spiel first of why we do what we do and um, how we do it. And then we're going to go through a full walkthrough of this beautiful 2023 Kia Sportage EX Hybrid. This is a very popular vehicle. We got a lot to say about it and we'll do an interior and exterior floor review. But first off, why do we do these videos? Well, I think we do them for three reasons. First reason is if you do own a Kia or a Hyundai and you want to know more about your vehicle, uh, this is a one-stop shop. You know, we've got tons of videos on every make, model, trim, and you'll get exactly what you need just by watching a video that's related to the vehicle you have. Yeah. Reason number two. Number two is you may be considering purchasing a new vehicle. We want you to add Kia or Hyundai or both to your selection list. These vehicles are fantastic. They offer great value, have great features, and they look phenomenal. So we do walkthroughs to show you guys what they look like, what they offer, what the price point is, if you're mm -hmm. in Canada at least, and why you should buy them. Exactly. And reason number three, if you do decide to buy a Kia or a Hyundai, why not buy from us? And if you, you have to live. Yes, that's it. See, I missed <laughs> that part. If you live in Ontario. Yes. So we actually have, just like uh, Gabby said, three locations. Um, and we're happy to help you, happy to serve you, happy to welcome you into the family. We're here at Brantford Kia, which mm -hmm. is where you work, Brantford Hyundai, which is down the street, which is where I work. And we have a location, Owen Sound Hyundai, which is obviously up north. All right. So with that being said, we're going to show you guys how you can join our next live video if you want to check that out. Um, like I mentioned, we go live every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All you got to do is go to the Kia Hyundai channel on YouTube. It should look a little something like this. And you can see we have a video that says upcoming right over there under our home tab. All you have to do is click on that. Then it'll load you in. Hello. <laughs> uh, you may have to watch an ad. If it's another car manufacturer, just politely ignore it. So I don't know what that is. Um, but on the right side over here, we have a live chat box where you guys can say hello. You can let us know if there's anything you want to see in the vehicle that we're filming today. And uh, you can ask us questions at the end of our walkthrough. Yes. So without further ado. I feel like this Subaru keeps coming closer yeah. and closer. So <laughs> I promise we're not. We're going to walk over to the Kia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so we sometimes get questions about why we have other cars in our video bay and number one is it's raining all the time here and we want to keep them clean and dry and number two is we're a dealership so we sell Kias of course and Hyundais but we also sell used vehicles so whether it be a Subaru, a Honda, a Mazda, anything we sell them and you can buy them. <laughs> all right I'm going to turn the lights on first and pop the hood we'll talk about the uh, horsepower and torque specs as well as the exterior styling. Then I'm going to turn them on. Whoa, those LEDs look cool when you turn them on. Aren't they cool? Yeah, I've only seen it during the day like this. All right. So the LEDs oh. on the EX trim um, include your fog lights, your daytime running lights, and of course your actual headlight unit. Pop this up. Oh, a Ooh. hybrid. Okay. So yes, <laughs> this engine compartment may look a little bit different than your traditional regular gasoline engine vehicle. You'll see a lot of orange components, and that is largely the hybrid um, component of the vehicle. So for the actual engine, you still have a regular gasoline engine. It's a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder GDI engine. So turbo, it's got a lot of power, good amount of power, uh, but it's still extremely fuel efficient, largely due to the hybrid motor that is in this vehicle. 227 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque, lots of fun to drive, very, very efficient. Um, if you were looking at the regular Kia Sportage and you might want to compare it to the hybrid, you'll definitely have a very large power increase in the hybrid and then of course the fuel efficiency increase. Now looking at the styling, it largely looks like a regular Kia Sportage, um, beautiful modern LED headlights, modern styling, a beautiful glossy black front grille. We do have the Kia emblem just on the top of the hood, so we can't see that right now, but I promise it's oh, there. We can. There Here we go. she is. <laughs> um, this paint color is called Gravity Gray. It's one of my favorites, and it has a nice metallic flake to it. You'll see it in the sunlight, not in our video bay, though. Our video quality camera, or our video camera quality is not that good. 
All right, now up at the front, you may not see it, but there is a front radar sensor in this bumper that picks up the distance of vehicles ahead of you. So, oh, where is right it? over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's a little off to the side on the Sportage, um, but that sensor is gonna pick up the distance of the vehicle ahead of you. And if you run into an instance where, I don't know, the vehicle slams on the brakes and there's a risk of a collision, your car will warn you. And then if you fail to react, it'll break for you. So not only is that gonna do it in just regular driving conditions, it'll also work in junctions. So if you're making a left turn at a, at a busy intersection, sorry, it's gonna be loud for one second. Woo, okay, now we can get a beautiful look at the front end. Without so any, the color is gravity gray, right? Gravity gray, yeah. There's also a lighter gray if you're more into that. It's called steel gray, absolutely stunning still. For wheels, we have 17 inch alloy wheels and these are a fuel efficient type of alloy. So you'll notice there's a plastic insert right over here. And this is to minimize um, air resistance as your vehicle's moving to of course increase your efficiency. Now we'll take a look at the windshield. And again, our camera quality is not good enough to actually point out what I'm gonna be talking about, but this windshield is heated. So if you've been driving thing? a vehicle, the my, windshield? Yes, the windshield's oh. heated. <laughs> so if you've been driving a vehicle for the past, I don't know, 20, 30 years, you're probably used to having your back window heated. So you'd press your little defrost button, snow and ice will melt right off. You have those tungsten burners that slowly melt them away. You have that in the front now too. And this is the EX trim for the hybrid, which is the entry level. So even in the entry, which by no means is vehicle basic, you get such a great feature like that. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah, I have a question. <laughs> I know this is a, such a, for me, is a tough question to ask, but you know in the back how they have the lines on the yeah. on the window? So, so there are here, look, right? Yeah, if you look closely, you can see them. Okay, well, but we you won't have be able to, pay, to see it on you have to, Our camera quality will not be Yeah, up. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if your eyes will pick it up. No, my eyes didn't. That's no. why I, yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> um, right over here, we have our turn signal indicator. This is an LED, so very bright, and again, a great safety um, feature. Now, on the mirror portion of the mirror, we do have an indicator for your blind spot detection. This will light up if there's a vehicle in your blind spot, whether it be on the left or right side, that will light up in, it's either red or orange, I forget, I'm sorry, I don't drive a Sportage every day. Um, and then if I were to indicate a turn or to change lanes, it'll beep at me if there is a vehicle there. And on top of that, if I go to change lanes, as, I'm, as there's a vehicle there, it'll revert me into my original lane if it detects a collision. So another safety feature. Up at the top, we have our roof rails. So these are nice and flush with the body of the vehicle. They're not raised at all. Um, so it still has a sleek look, but they are functional. And then we have this beautiful chrome insert that extends along through windows as a nice finishing touch. Now for the back. I love talking about this. It's not a feature, but I just think it's great styling. And there's a lot ben that benefits from this that you may not really think about until you actually take a look or mm -hmm. you listen to our videos. So this is your rear spoiler. But if you take a look underneath, you can see your rear wiper blade. So not only does this give the back end of the vehicle a nice clean look, it also keeps your window window blade, oh my gosh, your rear wiper, <laughs> from picking up snow, ice, anything really. So it's protected from the elements prolonging the life of your rear wiper. So let's say your windshield, it's not a windshield. Mm -hmm. All right, now the back of the vehicle, let me step aside for a second. Stunning, um, really clean look. You do have the HEV badge, which stands for hybrid electric vehicle. And then lower on the bumper, we do have parking sensors. So if you are backing this in a garage or even just a regular parking spot, as you approach any sort of obstacle, whether it be a wall, fence, or another car, it'll start to beep at you to let you know you're getting too close. And then you still have a backup camera. All right, we'll pop this open. Check that out. The car is still wet, so I'll try not to stand under spots. Um, tons of cargo space. We do have our summer mats that come with the vehicle, free of charge, of course. And it is a five-seater. These seats split in a 60-40 split. They all have car seat anchors, you can see on the back. And you can knock them down super easily by reaching one of these levers. So you give it a pull, bounces right down. It actually goes a bit flatter. Let me just do that real quick. There we go. Cool. So now it's locked into place. If you don't have any rear passengers, this vehicle offers a crazy amount of cargo area. Um, seriously, there's a lot you can do here. If you love to camp, you could sleep in your car if you wanted to. Uh, on the left side over there, we do have a 12 volt, so good for small devices, um, inflator kits, anything really, beach day. Uh, and we do have these little cargo clips that you can use on a cargo net. And on top of that, we get asked this question a lot, why some of our vehicles don't come with cargo covers. A lot of them don't come with them from factory, but you can always purchase them as an accessory. And this vehicle does have the inserts to mount your cargo cover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll close this up. 
Oh. Underneath there? Yes. <laughs> what do we got there? All right, spare oh. tire. <laughs> so this vehicle does come in spare tire, so does the SX trim level. <laughs> All right, maybe we'll hop inside the vehicle okay. right now. I'll come from that side? Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, another one of my favorite things about this vehicle is that as long as you have the key on you, it could be in your pocket or in your hand, you don't have to press any button except for what's on your door handle here. And this also works on the passenger side. Give it a press, it either unlocks or locks it, depending on if it was locked or unlocked before, and you're in. Love Mike, take Let's a quick glance inside. <laughs> okay, I'm interested of why they have this raised here. I don't know. Is there a specific reason? I, hmm? I, unfortunately, I don't know that. <laughs> It's a couple things go. I know about this car, but I don't have an answer for that. All right, I don't know if you guys caught all that, but our general manager, Tim, who you may have seen in our videos, just walked in with customers. Uh, so it's truly live. This video is not pre-filmed or anything. because we care about our customers. So if they want to know something, They're we're going to show them right away. Video <laughs> or no video. Video or no video. All right, I hope they like being on YouTube. <laughs> all right, on our door over here, we have this beautiful dark chrome panel that ties elegantly into your door handle. Now, I most door handles aren't worth talking about, but I think this one is, because it's a pretty cool design. As you can tell, it's not your average door handle, but it's easy to use. Um, mentioning Tesla right now, I'm calling them out. Yeah. You know how many times I've driven a Tesla from work home or something, and my friends get in, they try to get out, they're like, how do I get out of the car? This one you still know how to use. You don't need any special instructions on how to door, open the door. Anyway, <laughs> I'm done with my rant. Um, for our front two windows, the so driver and passenger, you have express up and down windows with pinch protection, which means if you go to close your passenger's window and let's say their arm's sticking out, it'll sense that there's an obstacle there and drop back down. What about a little doggy's arm? Little puppy's arm. Yes, I hope your puppy's arm is <laughs> outside of your car, though. Know, that scares me. It terrifies me. All right, for our speakers, we do not have a premium sound system in the EX trim. However, the sound system still sounds phenomenal. You can still play around with the bass treble range and even where it's at in your vehicle. So let's say you have rear passengers back there and they're not a fan of whatever music you like, you can move the music to the front or the volume to the front. Now we'll talk about this little panel over here. We have our brightness adjustment, so you can quickly change the brightness of your 4.2 inch digital cluster here or your beautiful 12.3 inch display in the center. So Which if it's is a bit angled towards the driver. So yes, slightly yes. angled towards the driver to remind you that the driver cool. is the boss. Yes. <laughs> um, truly, it is a driver focused vehicle. Of course, most vehicles are. Um, but as a driver, whether with passengers or not, you really feel like you can just grasp anything. You can reach anything. Um, it's super convenient. It's not one of those screens that you have to reach to the other side of the car to just change one simple little thing. Now, speaking of simple little things, let's talk about the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. It may not look like much at first, but there's so much you can do over here. We'll start off with our paddle shifters. This is a six-speed automatic, and you can change um, your gears with your paddles. On the left side, you have some super easy volume controls as well as voice commands, a phone button, and a favorite button. So when you first get this vehicle, it'll be blank. Um, once you press this button, though, it'll show you a menu on the screen. Sorry, I'm going to take the camera from Mike, where you can program that button to do whatever you'd like. So right now it says none. If I want this to take me to my hybrid menu, all I have to do is press this button. And then on our screen, you'll see we're now in our hybrid menu. A lot of my customers I find tend cool. to make that button their decline button for a phone call just because traditionally it's usually an answer or decline. Totally up to you though. This vehicle is all about customization. Then on the right side of the steering wheel, we have this little button over here, which changes what we're looking at in the center of our gauges. So hopefully that angle is okay for you guys. Yeah, awesome. We have our lane assist menu, our drive info, which will show your fuel consumption, as well as our navigation menu and our all wheel drive torque distribution, as well as our tire pressure. I think it's worth mentioning that in Canada, all trim levels of the Sportage hybrid are all wheel drive. So you can't get a front wheel drive one if you're wondering, it's all wheel drive. Okay, <laughs> now on the right side of that button, we have our cruise control button. So if you give this a press, you can set your speed with these toggles here, pause it or restart it. And then on top of that, you can set your following distance with this control here. Kia gives you four different presets from closest to furthest. And even if you reach stop and go traffic, this vehicle will literally take you to a complete halt and then take you right back up to speed again. It's super seamless, super smooth. And then on top of that, you can use this nifty little feature, which is called lane follow assist. Looks like a steering wheel with two lanes. And that uses the camera that's located right in front of your backup, um, backup, oh my gosh, rear view that mirror. That tiny one I tried to get in there, <laughs> right there, right? Sorry? 
right there. I don't yeah. know if you guys see it, but right in there. Yes. So that camera monitors the lanes ahead of you and keeps your vehicle centered right in your lane. If it senses that there's a curve coming up, whether it be on the highway or just a regular city street, my vehicle will literally steer for me and take that curve for me. It works super, super smooth. Um, it's not a full autopilot, so it's not gonna make a full left or right turn. You still have to be in control, but I really love it. It's very good. Um, I definitely recommend trying it on a test drive if you get the chance. All right, you wanna join me yes. in the passenger side? Funny, you've, you've, I've watched you speak about the drive assist and lane follow and lane keep assist all the time. Yeah. Never used it before. Used what? it Used it at the beginning of this week on my way home, you know, in my hour drive in traffic. Yeah. Like, where's it been all my life? Like, it was yeah. like perfect for stop oh, and go know. traffic. It's amazing. Um, my drive usually doesn't involve too much traffic. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're about to get copyrighted. Okay, the beeping's done. <laughs> um, my drive doesn't usually involve too much traffic, but sometimes I'll just use my cruise control with my steering assistance just for yeah. funsies. And the fuel efficiency is fantastic. The cruise control does kind of give you a little bit more efficiency. Um, and then of course the steering, like it's just nice to it's have It's super assistance. safe. I had yeah. someone cut in front of me, you know, just someone really cut yeah. in and it bra It was just perfect the way yeah. it brake and avoided it, but not without causing a like, you know, a reaction from other people. Yeah. So it, it's, it's really cool. Now I don't, um, I don't do without it. I think something worth mentioning that a lot of people do ask about is if I have my steering assistance on, my vehicle's taken over. No, no. <laughs> it's not a Decepticon. It's not taking over your vehicle. Um, it will still respond to driver input. So yeah. let's say there's something on the road, whether it be a, a bag of garbage or something. If I were to give pull to avoid it, it would still listen to mm -hmm. me. It's just going to give some slight driver assistance if I'm just on a regular curve of the road or something. Um, let's talk about the screen. Yeah. So 12.3 inch display standard on the hybrid Sportage. You have your hybrid menu like I showed earlier, as well as built in navigation. This is all throughout North America. So if you ever drive somewhere without service and you can't use your Google Maps on your phone or your Apple Maps, you can still always use this. Works great, even works with voice commands and works in French since we are in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a quiet mode, which means the speakers in the back. If you have little ones or pets that could be sleeping back there, giving the driver and passenger up ahead, um, access to still listen to music or podcasts, whatever you're listening to, and then peace and quiet. Now under setup, that's where we're gonna find some of our fun safety features. You can play around with them. You can change them to be completely personalized to what you like. So let's say you're not a fan of the forward collision avoidance. Have no fear, you can turn it off with the push of a button. A couple weeks later, you decide you want it back on. There we go, active assist, back on. Um, almost every single feature in this vehicle, you can either shut off, make it just give you a warning instead of actively assist you, or have it work as normal. So mm -hmm. whatever you like best, you can play around with. Here's your lane assist for your steering assistances. Blind spot safety, so you can tell right now it's on active assist, meaning it will avoid a blind spot collision, so it'll actively take action. <laughs> it'll, t it'll, t yeah. it'll actively assist you. Sorry to use that word again, but it'll actively assist you. And then we have parking safety. So when you're reversing out of a busy parking lot, this vehicle will give you a warning and will actually hit the brakes for you if it detects that you're not going to stop and somebody's walking or someone's driving their car past you. Great feature to have. Seriously, it's triggered so many times as I'm backing out. Um, I hate when two huge vehicles park beside me. I park somewhere completely empty and then of course two cars have to go beside me and mm -hmm. I don't see anything. Um, really, really great feature to have. All right, on top of that, I wanted to talk about the ambient lighting. So this vehicle does have some slight ambient lighting along the um, center console cluster here. Oh my gosh, the gimbal is going crazy. Whoa, but it looked like it made sense the way it moved. Okay, yeah, yeah. and then in the middle of our gear shift. While we're on the topic of our gear shift, let's talk about how it works. So this might seem a little crazy for some people if you're used to a regular, you know, even maybe a manual transmission. Mm -hmm. This is a little nuts. Um, works super simple, very easy to use. So all you have to do is completely um, depress your brake as you would in a regular vehicle, and then tip it over to whatever gear you'd like to be in. Reverse, yeah. neutral, it drive. Show it up there. Yep, right over there. We'll put it back in a park. Now over here, we have our heated seats and our heated steering wheel. In this little panel here, we have our Kia barcode stuff, <laughs> as well as a wireless phone charger a 12 volt USB in the center and then a USB-C on the right. And then this closes nice and easy, giving you a nice clean look. Two cup holders here that are retractable. So if you want to put like something- It's like the Palisade. Yep. With that. If you want to put something bigger in there, you totally can. 
If you want to look cool and say, use my cup holder. Oh, you got a drink too? There you yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> We're cool. <laughs> All right. And then just below your gear shift, you have a couple more buttons. So this is for your parking sensors if you want to turn them off. Your parking camera, if you give this a push, it'll pull up a live camera feed of whatever is in your backup area, as well as um, an indicator for your sensors. So I don't know if you guys can really see it, but do you see those three separate sections? The turkey tail. Yeah, the turkey tail. Yeah. So that will light up as I trigger something with my parking sensors. Yeah, either on like if something's on the left, it will just show. So it's broken up into three parts, if you guys can see it. You got it. And then right in the center, we have our drive and terrain mode. So I'm sorry for our American viewers. I don't think you guys get terrain modes or you mm -hmm. might get them on select models. In Canada, we get it standard. So I'm not saying we're better, but I, I do like the terrain modes. Yes. <laughs> so under our drive modes, we have three separate modes. You'll see which one you are on your gauge cluster right up here. So eco, sport, and smart. And not only do they change the colors of your gauges, they actually do stuff to your vehicle. What stuff is that? Eco mode is going to dull the throttle a bit, but give you way more fuel efficiency. Sport mode is going to do the opposite. So it's going to feel way more torquey, way more peppy. Your steering is going to be a bit stiffer, but you will consume a bit more fuel. It will still be pretty efficient because it is a hybrid, but just so you guys know that. And then smart mode just adapts to whatever you're doing. So if you're using a mix of both eco and sport driving, the vehicle will flip between them for you. I'm so sorry about all the beeping because we do have everything on right now, um, but the vehicle, of course, isn't on. It's going to beep at me all the time, reminding me that the vehicle's not on. I know that, but <laughs> just, just so you guys know too. Um, and then if I press this button down, it switches into terrain mode. And then from there, we have three more options. So snow, mud, and sand. And again, it doesn't just change your clusters. It actually does stuff. So the snow is, of course, going to give you optimal traction in the snow. Same thing for mud and sand. It's going to play around with the all-wheel drive torque distribution, your electronic stability control, your throttle response, everything to give you optimal performance in slippage conditions that was the worst sentence i ever said in my life that was the longest sentence i've ever heard <laughs> all right <laughs> now right in the center we have our center console so Am nothing no, no. <laughs> I think so. okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> this is so crazy we are live we are definitely live all right so center console we have nothing in here just a center console all right, now we'll talk about our glove she box. She was probably wondering what we were doing in here. What are these two yeah. people doing in here with a camera? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So uh, I can get, I'll get this one, Gabby. Okay. So we've got our <laughs> manuals here in both France and, French and English. France. And France and English. And yeah, you know, great place to put your receipts. Yeah. Like I always say. <laughs> All right. So that's about it for the front of this vehicle. Actually, we'll talk about climate control real quick. It's going to beep again. I'm so sorry. We're so Canadian because we apologize all the time. <laughs> all right. Right on this panel here, we have our climate control. So you can quickly change either the driver or passenger climate, or you can sync them up. Oh, nice. That's touch then. Yeah. So no buttons on that. You can also play around with the fan speed manually by selecting either the larger or smaller fan icon. If you're driving by yourself, let's say you're commuting on your own, you can go driver only. So that way the vehicle isn't working extra hard to heat up or cool down the entire cabin, just the driver's area. Um, you can also cycle into your multimedia screen. What? So this is going to allow you to quickly access any of the... Oh, that's cool. So that yeah. switches. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> Mike is learning. Every single yeah. video we do with Mike, he's with just... Kias. Yeah. With Kias. He's just learning things. Yeah. All right. So if I were to press map, it takes me to our map. See, Isn't that's really, that's a lot better than like, dare I say, some of the models we have where it's just like a ton of buttons everywhere. Yeah, You exactly. know, like that's cool that you could just kind of switch back and forth. So it's a button, but it's a screen, but it's still a button. You know what I mean? You don't have to cycle between a bunch of menus to mm -hmm. find something. You can quickly just press radio and it takes you to your radio, which is really nice. Um, this is especially great for the passenger, so they're not digging through so many things. And of course the driver, um, some people say, oh, won't it be a problem if you're going to go change your volume, but then you turn on your heat or turn on the AC. No, <laughs> it shouldn't. <laughs> you can always change your volume on the steering wheel if you are the driver. And as a passenger, I hope you'd be able to see the climate control. Um, I hope. If not, you can preset which one you'd rather it be. So that way, when you get into your vehicle, it's always on media or it's always on climate. All right. Now let's take a look at the back. All right. Bring that back up. Thank you, Mike. 
our back seats. So we have three seats back here, all with car seat anchors, like I mentioned. In the very center, you do have a cup holder and armrest that tucks right back in. The seats themselves are very comfy. And one thing I love about the Sportage, it's huge in here. It is seriously huge. Mm -hmm. So width-wise, it's definitely larger than the previous body styles Sportage, which we never had in a hybrid, by the way. Um, and then legroom, I have so much room, um, knee room and leg room and feet room uh, from the seat ahead of me. And this is way further back than how I'd normally sit. For reference, I am 5'3", so I'm not the tallest um, person to you know use for measurement, but still, I'm not the shortest. And that is a lot of space, seriously, a lot of space. Um, the seats themselves, I love what Kia did because they made them, of course, comfortable. They look nice but they're functional. Yes. So the back of the headrest is actually a hanger. You can hang a jacket on here, a bag, I love that. anything That's awesome. really. Then on top of that, you've got two more hangers on the back portion, so on the lower back portion. To the right of that, we have a USB-C, and that's flipped over to the passenger side as well, so it's mirrored on both sides. In the very center, we have some air vents, and then just below that, we have this little pocket here where you can easily put a phone that's charging on one of these USB-Cs here. Mm -hmm. Pretty spacious, seriously very, very spacious. You do have interior lighting, it's just regular bulbs, and then the ambient lighting is always only in the front of the vehicle. Now, that's about it for the back. I, I mean, love this, the, the convenience in the back, like this is really cool. If you're right? putting in a, or even if I have a sweater in the front, you know when you kind of struggle to take it off? Yeah. Just swing it back, and this is cool. You know what I realized this for? Because I was in one recently, and we went grocery shopping, but just two, three bags. This is a good way to not have your stuff falling all over yeah, the seat. Yeah, exactly. Like, really cool. So it still keeps most things, most bags, or things mm -hmm. off the ground, unless it's very, very long. Um, but, yeah, it, it's nice. <laughs> it's yeah. really nice to have. Yeah, it is. It's good use of space. Also, here's a cool thing I saw someone do. When they plug their phone in here, they just looped the cord so it was right, and it wasn't hanging off to the side. You could do that, too. See? Mike. You don't get these tips on regular TV, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the Kia um, commercials don't give you these yeah, tips. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's all do-it-yourself kind of things. All right. Oh. So now we're going to go through our questions to see if you guys... I guess I'll just lean on this again because you, you it's... you got to cover the Subaru badge. I think. Okay, no, here. Gonna, we'll oh. move over to the side. Okay, cool. See, we should have <laughs> did that in the first place. Right? Yeah. But we wanted to get the car... In the beginning, so that's why I was kind of, not because it's Friday. Yeah. Maybe because it's Friday. Let's see. Brad said, those Koreans think of everything except sunglass holders. Yes. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know me and Shella have beef with the fact mm -hmm. that sunglass holders are being removed from so many of our vehicles. I don't understand why. I mean, I get it to get rid of CD players. Mm -hmm. I mean, cassette players have been gone for forever. That's understandable. But sunglasses? Our human eyes do not yeah. change like the technology of CDs do. Yeah, you know and what like I, mean? I want my glasses in a protective case and not being scratched. Yeah. My brother bought a 2019 Santa Fe XL, mm -hmm. and there's two sunglass holders in that one. Yeah. Um, great question from Rick. Do either Brantford Kia or Hyundai have stock in new vehicles? The Kia website mainly shows not for sale. So at this point, we do have a bunch of vehicles here that are sold, so they were ordered from customers. We always try to list them on our website as not for sale, if that's the case. If it's one of the vehicles that we do have here that are unsold, but they're used as test drive cars or demos, we also list that as a test drive vehicle. So they're here just for demonstration purposes, and then you can order off of them. So if you test drive our Seltos, fell in love with it, want to get a Seltos, unfortunately there is a wait on those vehicles. We usually sell almost every single car we have before it actually hits our lot mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. So for us, we a little bit better luck, yeah. and then this is and then bad news to follow. But a little bit better luck <laughs> recently. If you see it online on like the Brantford Hyundai .ca website mm -hmm. right now, and it doesn't have a test drive unit only at the bottom, mm -hmm. it's actually available. Now here's that bad news I was talking about: is that it will be available for a very short time, yes, a day or two, yeah. because we have people that obviously are aware that we're getting in new inventory that are on a waiting list, but still you know, checking to see if maybe we got something allocated to us. The situation obviously at, at the port with the semi-strike or whatever is going on didn't help yeah. our case. So we'll see it slow down a tiny bit, but come back up in the next month too as well. Okay. Um, what is the average wait time for a gas powered Sportage and a hybrid Sportage? So if we're talking about the EX hybrid, I would say probably between a year to 16 mm. months. Now, if we're talking about the SX, unfortunately, I think it's getting close to one and a half to two years. 
unfortunately. Um, now, depending on what color you're looking for and where you're located, it could be shorter, but right now we're having a really tough time trying to get those vehicles, like a very, very tough time. Um, and then PHEV is even worse right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, and Vision 74. We saw one at the auto show, then I see them in my dreams here mm -hmm. and there, but that's about it. It's uh, if we're not gonna have them for mass production to sell anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> Antonio Botello said, how many PHEV, either SX or EX premium, were you able to see since the spin out? So I think we've only seen three and they've all been EX premiums. Two we've physically wow. seen, so they've been here and then one will be here in about a month. Oh wow. Yes, it's rough up there. <laughs> um, any update on the 2024 Sportage PHEV? I am waiting to order one. So I don't think there'll be any changes to it because the 2023 was just released last year. So it's a brand new model for Kia. Um, so I don't think there'll be any new features, new updates, maybe a new color, but at this point we don't have anything yet. Mm -hmm. Did you take a look at the Ionic 5N yet? We saw it at the auto show. Yes. So we don't have anything at this point no. in regards to stock, what it's no. going to be like or what it's no, like to order one. we don't have any info and we can't order it yet, but uh, we did see it at the auto show. You can catch that if you go back in the videos to see yeah. <laughs> us walk by it. Okay, what is that? It has a plug-in soon. Hmm. Um, Will Hyundai and Kia switch to the NACS Tesla plug soon? It will be convenient if they did. Oh, good question, Hank. So we haven't heard anything official yet. However, many manufacturers are speaking on doing that, um, mm -hmm. but nothing confirmed for Kia or Hyundai yet. I really hope that does happen because again, that would be so convenient, seriously so convenient. Yeah. Um, Ethan said, I know I asked this so many times, but do you remember me? Yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> You're on almost every single live. We remember literally all of our viewers. We do. Yes. We do. And we remember the ones that aren't on right now. Like yeah. I noticed Japan Quake's not on. Yeah. Um, Vishwa. So Vishwa, I remember you too. Um, he asked, where is Charlotte? And Charlotte's actually on vacation this week. Um, but on top of that, she is also on maternity leave. So she's not going to be here full time mm -hmm. like me. Uh, she's usually here about one to two, maybe three days a week if we're lucky. But you'll still see her on this channel for sure. Just not this week. Do you have free EV charging at your dealership? So at our dealership, if you have, we don't have EV charging stations there for people to park and plug. Um, we do have a charging station, but it's you, typically someone comes in for service, yeah. we'll charge their vehicle for them. We usually, yeah, we have it for our service customers um, and then also employees or just some of our vehicles that we sell. Mm -hmm. Almost every single hour of the day, we have our EVs plugged in because we yeah. have so many electric cars here, either between our customers or our stock that's coming in. So of course, before we deliver a new electric vehicle to our customers, we always make sure it's charged. Mm. No. How There's many did you say? You have one in the shop and one out here? We have one in here, one outside the okay. store. We have one on that side. We have one in the shop. We have- They are always plugged in. You guys always do we have vehicles always plugged, have cars in, plugged in, in there. Yeah. Always. So we wouldn't be the best place to stop for a charge because mm -hmm. there's always cars plugged in here. Um, do we know the Seltos all-wheel drive waiting period? So there's so many trim levels that have all-wheel drive on the Seltos. If you're looking at the EX all-wheel drive, I wanna say four to six months, but depending on what color you're looking at and the availability at your dealership, it could vary. Um, right now, every Seltos we have coming in that's either built, scheduled to be built, or already on the way in here is sold. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Wait. I have a question. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a Stinger GT for sale? Yes. Or is it sold yet? No, it's for sale. So mm -hmm. we still, this is the only vehicle we have on ground right now that is available. It's a 2023 Kia Stinger GT Elite, black with red interior. It's absolutely stunning. Um, and it's literally. I noticed it on the way in and I'm like, there's no sold sign on this. Impossible. It's right there. You know, <laughs> if we go outside, we'll lose you guys. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> so we're not going outside, but, uh, but yeah, I know that's why I asked. Cause I saw it. There was no sold sign on it. I'm like, this can't be. Corey asked a good question. Why can't dealerships order in advance on Sportages, especially if they sell so quickly? So it's been well over a year now that Kia has closed our ordering bank. So no Kia dealership in Canada. I don't know if it's the same in the U S unfortunately, um, can actually place a factory order. That means if Mike came in today mm -hmm. and he wasn't from this channel, I didn't know him. He says, I want to place an order on this red Sportage. I'm like, okay, we'll take your deposit, your color choice, everything. Um, but we can't place an order with the factory. It's put into our internal order list, so at our dealership, and then it goes based off our allocation. Yeah. So if next month we get allocated a Sportage that matches what he ordered and there's nobody waiting ahead of him, he has a car. 
However, <laughs> if it's the other way around, which it likely is, it could be a longer wait. Wait, so you said if I didn't work here. If I worked here, I wouldn't have no, no chance? No, no, no. So. Oh, I thought you may said, no, we're saving it for the customers. Employees don't get anything. Yeah, so even for me, for example, I ordered a Kia Forte about a year ago, mm -hmm. and I got lucky with a canceled vehicle, so I took that one. By the time my actual order came in, I already had my car for a couple months, like a while. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, we're all waiting. <laughs> Um, one question, do you guys think the interest rate goes down soon? I don't think so. Like, do I answer that based on my knowledge of the economy or do I answer that based on the automotive? So interest rates just went up again too as well. If you guys watch any news and you pay attention to that, they're talking about a cool down of the total economy somewhere around mid-2025. Don't quote me. I'm not a financial analysis. But I think hand-in-hand hand with mortgage rates and like, let's say, automotive rates, they're kind of hand in hand with that. So yeah. do I think they're going to go down soon? No, honestly, mm -hmm. no. Um, but I don't expect any major increases. But it did go up two times what, in the last two weeks or something like that. It's insane. Yeah. Um, Ethan said, Gabby and Kia team, I want to thank you guys for being, so, uh, I want to say you guys are awesome and thank you for being so kind. Thank you for watching, Ethan. We seriously appreciate having you support our channel. And then everyone else, Hank, um, Brad, Dale, so many people. Yes. Just like There's all these tons names. Of people. These names that are so familiar. MG. Yes. Winters, MG. Stephen Evo Winters. X, yeah. Like. First from Puerto Rico. Stephen Winter. Oh, well, we love seeing you Alvin, guys. Alvin. Ryan Dupont. The BMW guy that always talks about BMWs. Yeah. Alvin or Alan or sorry, uh, but yeah, Christian. See, <laughs> I Christian, shouted yeah. you out there too. But uh, I actually think of like I think when it starts, I go, I wonder who's going to be Sometimes here today. Sometimes yeah. I literally go home and I'm like. I'll literally, Charlotte does the same thing. We'll, we'll talk to, I don't know, just our friends and be like, oh my gosh, so Japan Quake said the funniest thing. Oh yeah, like, I talk, my wife, on the way home, we yeah. start talking about the, you guys make me feel cool. <laughs> 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 you do, like it's, 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 it's really cool. That we, you know what, we love the love. Yeah. I, I think that's it. And it's amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. It, it's, yeah. I can never imagine like this being my job. It, I do it, not. Yeah, I know. It. For me too. Like I do nothing else, guys. I go home and then I'm full time dad. So th this <laughs> is like the best part of my day. Honestly, it is. <laughs> All right. Now, before I start crying, I think we should probably what? end off today. No. <laughs> okay. I'm getting emotional. Um, we'll probably end off today's video. Thanks again so much for watching. It has been a pleasure and. <laughs> we just needed okay, to end this video with the third set of people yes. walking in during the live. All right. It's been one of those days. It's been real. See ya. <laughs>